Love is spiritual, not natural. You ever think about that? This is absolutely miraculous. With love, you get the results now. Hi, I'm Dr. Alex Lloyd and welcome to Deep Water. I'd like to discuss uh, or, or start a discussion about health insurance and the health care industry. And if you've been in America in the last five or six years, you know this is one of the biggest, most controversial issues we have. Um, for years, it was just, you know, buy insurance if you can. If you can't, then just go into the hospital and, you know, they'll take care of you as best they can. And that's kind of the situation in America. And then uh, Obamacare came along with a uh, wonderful intent, I believe, to take these people who don't have health insurance um, and give them health insurance. So when they go in, just like the people who are paying and have a little card and they scan the card and okay, you're good. Um, now the people who did not have insurance can have that and go into the hospital and have their card and they receive their care. Um, so what's controversial about that? Well, in 1986, the Emergency Medical Treatment Act was signed into law. 1986, um, 25 years ago, okay? What does the Emergency Medical Treatment Act say? It says that all hospitals, you hear that? All hospitals, 100% of hospitals. So think about the hospital that you go to, have gone to, or would go to if you felt bad or broke your arm or something. That hospital is receiving federal aid because all hospitals receive federal aid so that they can treat anyone and everyone whether they can afford to pay or not. That is the 1986 Emergency Medical Treatment Act and it is still law today. Okay, even with Obamacare and now Biden Care or whatever and, and all of that, the Emergency Medical Treatment Act is still law. That has not been repealed. That is still the case. Every hospital in the United States of America receives federal aid so that they can treat anyone and everyone whether they can afford to pay or not. Um, and one particular note about this in that uh, law is that elective medical issues are included in that. Okay, so let's say the doctor says, yeah, you've got a health thing, but it, you know, it's not real serious, so you don't have to have that done. I mean, you could, but it's not life or death. You don't have to. Well, the Emergency Medical Treatment Act says that that person can elect to have that done at that hospital and that hospital is supposed to pay for it and, and give them that procedure, treatment, whatever it is, okay? And that is to come out of the federal dollars that they receive for that specifically for that situation. Uh, the average in hospitals across the U.S. Um, is that for paying clients, meaning those who can afford to pay or who have health insurance, hospitals make $2 on average for every $1 that's paid. Now, how in the world can they do that? Do they have a, a money copying machine? No, no, no. They receive federal money to treat anyone and everyone that might need care, whether they can afford it or not. So, for patients who can afford it, the hospital is making $2 
for every one dollar that they're paid, which is great profit, big time profit, okay? That's why hospitals are among the most profitable ventures in the world today. Um, while, while this applies to all hospitals, private hospitals tend to focus on the paying clients and intentionally make it difficult for the poor or the non-paying clients to get their treatment there. So many of them will do everything they can. They have this planned out um, process that if the person can't pay to get them to a public hospital rather than a privately owned hospital because the private we're here to make as much money as we can and treating people who can't pay us um, decreases uh, our profit. Now, they don't, they don't evidently uh, care a whole lot about the fact that they receive federal dollars to treat those people just like the public hospitals do and they keep that money. They don't send it back and say, hey, we really don't treat a lot of these folks so we're sending our $20 million back for this. No, 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 no. They don't do that. They just add the federal dollars to their profit. And, and that's a big reason why they make $2 for every dollar that they're paid. Um, also, private hospitals or any hospital, they are legally allowed to seek payment from a patient who did not pay even though they have already been paid by the government for that patient. In other words, they're allowed and it's legal for them to basically seek double payment because the government pays them to treat those people and then if they go after that person to get them to pay they can add that to their profit as well. And you might be surprised that some of the methods they use are kind of almost in the same category as the IRS, threatening a lien against their, the person's property, uh, harassing them over and over and over with emails, phone calls, fr uh, threatening ones even, okay? Um, and they do that even though they have been paid by the government in order to treat those people already. Um, if you go to healthcare.gov, you will see that 80, approximately 80% of all who apply for health, for government funded healthcare receive it. That's four out of five. 80% of all who apply for the government to pay for their health care qualify for the government to pay for all or part of their health care. Um, and most of the payments of those people who seek help from the government, their insurance from a government plan, the great majority of those plans cost the patient less than ten dollars. Okay, so the great majority that do that pay less than ten dollars and eighty percent of all who apply either receive it free or less than ten dollars or whatever. Alright, so that is pretty big deal and, and if you reverse that, yeah that leaves 20% of people basically paying for 80% of people to have health care. Okay? Now that's, I'm, that's not exact. There's a lot of factors and complications that it'd take me too long to explain. I don't even understand all of them. Okay? But in general, yes, 80% is paid for by the 20% okay, who uh, can pay for insurance and do. Now an interesting thing about this, 
Um, I've got a good friend, a very good friend, who is um, not poor by any means, makes six figures a year, has a beautiful big house, big yard, goes on trips, has all kinds of nice stuff, okay? And they have no health insurance and haven't for as long as I've known them, okay? Well, why would they do that? Isn't that, isn't that dangerous? Isn't that risky? Isn't that not from what they tell me? And we've had multiple discussions and their position is the 1986 Emergency Medical Treatment Act, if I go in for care, they have to care for me. All right? Now, they may say they don't at first. They may lie. They may go into their 12-step plan to get you to a private hospital so they don't have to pay for it. But if none of that stuff works, their last resort is they have to treat you. Okay? And so... There are people out there like my friend who can afford to pay who are not. Basically because the system will allow them to do that. Now they have to go through some trouble. They may have to go through those threatening emails and phone calls and all that. But at the end of the day, what they tell me is they end up not paying and the hospital writes it off. And these are people who are at least middle class, maybe upper middle class or, or higher. 65% um, uh, since Obamacare, 65% of uninsured people who are aware of the government medical health care system now never apply. 65% never apply. Why? Well, it makes sense to me. It's free to them anyway. They just walk in. It's federal law that they have to treat them, even if it's an elective, even if they make it difficult. They still have to treat them. So it's free anyway. And if it's going to cost them 10 bucks a month or whatever, hey, that's 10 bucks a month I can use for something else. So um, even though I wish that didn't happen because it kind of games and hurts the system, just like my friends uh, who can afford health insurance, not paying for it because they can get away with it, that's gaming the system too. Um, but, but both of those groups still exist, all right? Uh, there's been a 27% increase in the cost of health care insurance uh, since 2000, and that number is still skyrocketing. According to Forbes, the top 25 hospitals in the United States make a 25 to 45% profit. You heard that right. A 25 to 45% profit. That is huge. That is monstrous. And, and, and in that article, it compared them to having about the same profit margin as most of the major pharmaceuticals, who everybody knows are some of the wealthiest com companies in the world anywhere. The average doctor working in a hospital earns $172,130 a year. Now, that doesn't mean they're a millionaire, but I think it means they, they make enough to get by. All right? So, again, we're, we're, this, it's the reason it's controversial. There's good points on both sides. All right? So, what could be a spiritual, maybe, bottom line to this? That maybe um, we could come together on all sides in integrity, character, speak the truth in love, kindly look at all of the facts, and try to find a better way together, all right? That's what America's built on. That's, what the, that's the intent of the Constitution. And I think it's really what all of us want, is a better America for all of us. And in this case, a better health care system. Well, one thing I thought about um, 
as I was praying and meditating for today was the Hippocratic Oath, which originated um, hundreds, hundreds of years ago. All right? What if we said, okay, we love our doctors, we need our doctors, we are absolutely fine with those doctors making $172,000 a year or more. They sacrificed, they did extra school, they worked hard, they work hard today. A lot of them work long hours, you know, things like that. So we want our doctors, we love our doctors, we want them to be better and better and better doctors, okay? But they're doing okay. They're getting by, $172,000 a year. All right, the hospitals are getting by. Uh, the top ones, twenty-five to forty-five percent profit margin. Uh, the average one makes two dollars for every paid dollar they receive. That's millions a year. All right, they all receive federal aid so that they can treat anyone and everyone, whether they can afford it or not. All right, so all those things seem to be okay. All right. Um, so, what could be maybe a solution we haven't looked at seriously or or enacted yet? Maybe it has been looked at but discarded for some reason. Well, I thought of one. All right. What if we said, okay, we're going to pass a law that every doctor has to literally apply and base their practice and treatment on the Hippocratic Oath. What if we did that? Just that one thing. What would that mean? Well, what does the Hippocratic Oath say? Well, it, it says quite a bit and some of it is hard to understand and there's modern versions that you can't understand but I saw several places that it was boiled down to one simple phrase that encapsulated the entire Hippocratic Oath. What is that? Help and do no harm. That's it. Help and do no harm. So every medical doctor in the United States has raised their hand, promised, made a vow in a special ceremony to help and do no harm. Now, does that say help those who have health insurance? No. Does it say um, help those who um, don't have health insurance? No. It says everybody. This applies to everybody, everyone that a doctor might ever possibly come into contact with. They have taken a vow to help and do no harm. What if they started practicing that literally? Which means anyone who comes through those doors that needs help will get help. And instead of this you know, 15 point process to try to make the person believe they don't have the right to help unless they pay or to get them to a public hospital so they can absorb the cost instead of the private hospital. No, 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 no. All that's out the window. If somebody walks through the door and they need help and you're a doctor, whether they can pay, whether they cannot pay, you're going to help them you're not going to turn them away. That would not be helping them, right? Turning them away would not be helping. That would be hurting, all right? So you have to help. If someone comes through those doors, you have to help and, of course, do no harm, all right? Regardless of whether they can pay or not. You, you know what? When I read the 90, 1986 Emergency Medical Treatment Act, that's basically what it says. It's basically put into law the Hippocratic Oath. So how come it's not happening? Money. Private hospital corporations and money. 
that's it, as far as I can tell. All right? So, um, start talking to people, uh, research it for yourself, and um, let's, let's, let's start a movement. Let's start a, a protest to enact the Emergency Medical Treatment Act for everyone, and maybe the people who bear the brunt of this are the doctors. But they're getting by okay, and so are the hospitals, all right? So for the greater good, let's help never turn away, never not help, and do no harm regardless of what kind of car they drive, whether they have a card or don't have a card. I'm not saying eliminate those things, okay? I'm saying to make a change, and the change is at the doctor level, that they will actually, with every single person that comes in, help and do no harm. You know what that's called in the legal profession and some others? Pro bono, all right? And every lawyer is encouraged to have a certain percentage of their practice that, that they do just to help people. That's no charge, all right? Um, I've had a, 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 a policy in my company and with my clients since the day we started. We will never turn a single person away because of money, and we never have. And we have done just fine financially. In fact, I think we've been blessed financially because of that. I believe if we did this, the hospitals would not go bankrupt. The doctors would still make their 172 grand a year. Maybe 80% would not have to be paying for the 20%, and everyone would get the care they needed. Um, I'm sure this is way too simplistic, but let's start talking about it and see if together we can come up with a solution instead of this kind of hidden behind the curtain, almost like the wizard in the Wizard of Oz, uh, someone pulling the strings that's all about money, money, and more money, not about help and do no harm. Let's switch that and make it about help and do no harm and let the money fall in place, which I believe it will, from that. And I believe we will all be much, much, much better off. So um, think about it, talk about it, and have a wonderful blessed day.